In this last part on duality via uh, the very general perturbation function, we want to deal with strong duality. And strong duality is um, the property uh, uh, that uh, the primal and the dual optimal value go inside and that the dual problem has at least one solution. And the advantage is that now a necessary and sufficient optimality condition for the primal problem is that there exists some dual point such that they have the same function value or alternatively um, that uh, the, this condition with the subdifferential of the perturbation function holds. And uh, to establish this strong duality, uh, we want to introduce a so-called constraint qualification, um, which, uh, which will guarantee this property and which you can um, easily check for, for, for your, basically for your, uh, for the perturbation function. Um, and and uh, later you will be, you, you, you can check this uh, going from from your original problem. And such constraint qualifications may already be familiar to you. Um, for example, um, we will see that um, if we specialize our problem to uh, Lagrange duality, uh, we will recover the Slater uh, constraint qualification. And uh, for non-convex problems, you may also have heard about uh, conditions such as LICQ, um, linear independence constraint qualification, or MFCQ, um, Mangazari and Fromovitz um, constraint qualification. And these are for the same purpose that you get um, that you get your optimality conditions. And here, um, these optimality conditions. Uh, for, for the convex case, which we handle here, will be necessary and sufficient. All right, so let's come uh, to the theorem. Uh, theorem. Uh, okay, so let P, uh, P D B a primal dual pair of optimization problems via the perturbation function phi mapping from H times G to R bar. Okay, so um, here we want to um, look at the projection of, um, uh, of this space, of this product space H times G on the second component. So, um, first of all, um, let phi be proper and convex, just that we have everything on phi, and let pi, capital pi, uh, should, uh, should, um, uh, should be this letter here, um, mapping from h times g to g, um, be given by pi x, y equals y, as I said, this projection. Okay. Um, let 0 be in the interior of pi of dom phi. So the domain of phi, the, the, the domain of phi is a subset of h times g. If you project it, you get a subset of G and zero, the zero of G should be in the interior 
of this projected domain. Okay, and this is the so-called uh, constraint qualification. So um, this will be um, our, our kind of uh, condition of regularity for our problem, which will guarantee that we get the, the, the optimal, uh, these optimality conditions as we wish. Uh, if we don't have this, then um, this optimality condition which we formulate, um, formulated will only be sufficient, but it will not necessary. That, that means there can be problems um, which have solutions, but you won't find any dual solution, and, and therefore you will not be able to check optimality uh, by means of this uh, simultaneous primal dual uh, optimality condition. Okay, so therefore this CQ is important. So then um, now we, we essentially claim um, that strong duality holds, so then um, the optimal value values of P and D coincide and um, D has at least one solution. Okay. And as I announced in the last video, we want to use um, the, the, the theorem that we get this statement by proving that the infimal value function at zero has a non-empty subdifferential. Okay, so proof. Um, let H um, be the corresponding in female value function. And I should also mention that H in this case maps from G to R bar. Uh, I forgot this here. Okay, so um, now we have clarified our setting. So uh, first of all, we want to um, we want to calculate the domain of H in terms of phi. You notice that H does not appear here in the theorem, so H is not necessary uh, to, to check the strong duality. This theorem we proved was basically a, a lemma uh, which used this H, but in, in practice it might be, yeah, H is not, is not easy to compute and therefore you want to check the, the duality only by using um, for example, phi, which is easier to handle. Okay, so then uh, let's look at DOM H. So what is the domain of H? The domain of H is uh, the set of all points Y in G, so these, such that H and H is defined as the infimum over X in H of phi x y and this infimum should be less than plus infinity. So uh, this is h of y and the domain of h is the set of all points such that h of y is not is, is less than plus infinity. Okay so what does it mean uh, for, for this inf infimum to be less than plus infinity, this just means that there exists some x in H such that phi xy is less than plus infinity. <clears throat> okay, so this means that, well, now we can use the domain of f, so there exists x in H such that xy is in the domain of phi. Okay, the domain of phi is again all these, all the points where phi is less than plus infinity. So uh, this is uh, the domain of phi. 
So, and now you see that um, here in this domain of h, we take this domain of phi and we only take the second components here. We just, we, we are only interested in the existence of some x such that uh, the pair is in, in the domain, but the domain of h only consists of these second components. So the domain of h itself is only the projection of the domain of phi. Okay. So this is how we get the domain of h. So this means thus c uh, q is, uh, since we now know this, is equivalent to zero in the interior of the domain of h. And this is actually why we wanted to have this constraint qualification. And um, zero in the interior means that whenever we can prove that h is proper, then we know h is convex because phi is convex and we have proven in the last video that this also implies that h is convex. So phi convex implies h convex. Now we need to prove that h is proper and then we can use our theorem that um, the subdifferential in the interior, in any point of the interior of the domain of a proper convex function is non-empty. And this will in turn guarantee that the subdifferential of h at zero is non-empty, which is what we uh, need. Okay, so um, the problem is h does not need to be proper. Uh, therefore, we have to distinguish two cases. So the first case uh, is like the, the, the degenerate case where h of zero is minus infinity. So h of zero is, um, h of zero, so h is not proper. And also h of zero minus infinity means that uh, our primal problem P is unbounded. That's, that, that is, it, it, it admits arbitrarily small objective values. So the infimum of the objective values is minus infinity. Okay, um, what does this mean? Well, for all B in, uh, in G, this means that then H star of B is the supremum over um, b y minus h of y, and you take the supremum over all y in g. Um, and this is certainly uh, greater or equal than uh, just taking some, some value for y, for example, 0. Um, so b0 minus h of 0, and this is obviously plus infinity um, because h of 0 is minus infinity. This is 0, 0 minus minus infinity is plus infinity. All right, so this means that h star is uh, plus infinity uh, at all points. All right, so this means that... Uh, the dual problem, uh, so actually the dual objective function, so this uh, we, have, we have seen that phi um, 0 b, uh, actually minus, z, minus phi 0 b was, so we want to maximize this, is uh, minus h sorry, phi star 0b, now it's now it should be correct, is, is, is minus h star of b, and this is uh, plus infinity uh, for all uh, b in g. This means that, <coughs> sorry, uh, 
minus h star of b is obviously minus plus infinity, so it's minus infinity. So this means that um, um, optimal values co the optimal values coincide and any b in G is a solution to D because any B and G uh, admits this minus infinity value. Okay, so uh, this is the first case. This is like the degenerate case when the primal problem is unbounded. And this means that um, effectively the dual problem is infeasible um, because it's a maximization problem and and all the values are minus infinity so and and we have we have somehow identified um, the like for a minimization problem the infeasible points with plus infinity and the, as a, in the maximization problems the infeasible points are minus infinity okay so uh, just as a remark d is infeasible Okay, so here P is unbounded. Okay, so now the second case. Um, the, the, the only other case is that H of zero is a real number. Okay, because H of zero cannot be plus infinity because it's in the domain of H. Um, as, uh, as by the constraint qualification. So um, now we, we, we just have to prove that H is proper. Um, we show that H is proper. If not, um, uh, let, for example, if, if H is not proper, then we let uh, X hat in H. So if not proper, it cannot be constant, constant plus infinity because we have a real value. So let uh, X hat in H um, be such that um, H of X hat is, um, sorry, is plus is minus infinity. This is the only other possibility for H to be not proper. Um, since zero is in the interior of the domain of H, there exists some X tilde in the domain of H such that we can write zero um, as a convex combination of um, x hat and x tilde with uh, lambda between zero and one. Why is this? So uh, here we have our zero, here we have our x hat, and um, zero is in the interior of the domain of F, so there is a ball around zero, uh, which is also contained in the dom domain of H. And then we can take the point here in the ball, and so, or we, can, we can take the, the line between zero and X hat and, and prolong it a bit so that we, we are still in this ball. And... Um, we call this point x tilde, and this is a linear combination. Okay, and this means that, well, h of zero uh, by convexity of h, convexity of h, as I said, follows from the convexity of phi. Um, there is space here that I can I can just write this. H is convex 
by convexity of pi. Just to remind our, ourselves. Okay, h of zero less or equal than one minus lambda h of x hat plus lambda h of x tilde and h of x tilde is less than plus infinity because uh, x tilde is in the domain of h and this is minus infinity and therefore we have a positive um, positive factor times minus infinity plus uh, some real value or, or even minus infinity and this would be mean that h of zero is minus infinity and this is a contradiction to the assumption that we have a real value at zero. Okay, so now we have shown that h is proper um, by contradiction. So now um, we have shown that h is proper convex and zero is in the interior of the domain of H. Um, so we have shown that, or we have we have earlier in this lec in this lecture series proven a theorem that this means that the uh, subdifferential of H at zero is non-empty, and then um, the statement. follows by the theorem um, from the last video. Okay, the, 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 the theorem from the last video said that any, any element in the subdifferential of H at zero is a dual solution and if this if the subdifferential is non-empty, that um, these optimal values coincide. And therefore, we have shown this constraint qualification, which does not use H, which only uses um, properties of the domain of phi. So whenever you can somehow use the domain of phi, then uh, you can check this constraint qualification, and this will guarantee you the existence of dual solution. Uh, dual solutions. Um, and in the next videos we want to um, see these examples of these of, of the perturbation functions for Fenchel duality and Lagrange duality and we want to see what all these things here mean for these special cases and how you interpret for example um, uh, the, the dual solutions there.